Hello, and welcome to Can Hardly Wait, a channel dedicated to long-term sustainable weight loss. I'm your host, Sandra, and with this channel, I will be sharing my weight loss journey from the beginning stage to the end result. I'll be tracking my weight loss on a week-by-week -week basis and sharing it here for all to see. I want to show that it is completely possible to lose weight while still eating the foods that you love and without having to commit to a rigorous exercise routine. It is absolutely possible to lose large amounts of weight without taking expensive supplements, committing to costly gym memberships, or subscribing to overpriced weight loss and meal delivery programs. So what's the catch? Counting calories and incorporating physical activity into your weekly routine. It's that simple. Less calories in than out. It does work. In each video, I will share what I eat in a week, the calories consumed, and the physical fitness that I did that week, as well as we'll be sharing some other weight loss tips and tricks along the way, and some recipes too. At the end of each video, I will reveal just how much I lost in that week. I wanted to provide something different with this channel. Yes, it is inspiring to see success stories of people losing large amounts of weight and essentially changing their whole life. Yet what I find time and time again is that these stories are often being shared after the individuals have already lost the weight. I want to show the beginning stage, the raw and unedited version, the good, the bad, and the chunky. I also feel that by documenting my weight loss journey, it will not only help keep me motivated, but it'll also help keep me accountable. Because the last thing I want to do is fail miserably and show the whole world just how I did so. I also feel I have a great deal of knowledge when it comes to this subject and a lot to offer to others who, like me, have struggled with their weight for years. So if weight loss and physical fitness is something important to you, I encourage you to keep watching and look out for future videos. Let's get into it. One last thing before we move forward. I just want to state that the information being shared in this video I accumulated from various sources over the years and a lot of the information being shared is just based on my personal experience. I am not a doctor or a licensed medical professional and I do not have a degree in nutrition. It is also always recommended to check with your doctor before starting any specific diet or exercise routine. Now with this being my first video ever, I did want to include a little backstory before we get into the food and calorie content for week one. As you can see, I have not always been overweight. I was a perfectly healthy baby. Despite always having a hearty appetite and being well fed, I was always a normal healthy weight as a kid. Growing up in the 90s and having a childhood consisting of a lot of video games and cartoons, I still remember riding my bike all the time, and I'm sure this helped me remain a normal weight during those years more than I know. It really wasn't until I hit puberty around 11 that I gradually started to gain weight. But even then, I was still a good weight for my height. I think where things really started to go wrong was when I started working at Pizza Hut at age 15 and could literally eat all the free pizza and drink all the free soda that I wanted. Is it any wonder why I have a slight pizza addiction to this day? I think not. By sophomore year, I would say I weighed roughly 160 pounds, so roughly 25 pounds over my ideal weight uh, for my height of 5'4". Still not unreasonable, and honestly, being a curvy girl, I think I held my weight well and still looked good. By senior year, I had gained another 20 pounds and weighed roughly 180. Even at this weight, I still felt good, and I think that the fact that I was young, I really didn't feel the effects of my weight at this point in my life. Over the following three years, with having independence and my own vehicle and money, and therefore being able to eat out whenever I wanted, I started to gain weight on a yearly basis, making it into the low 200s by the age of 20. Flash forward 13 years later, after one unhealthy relationship in my early 20s, followed by a healthy relationship with a fellow foodie, my boyfriend now of seven years, uh, quitting smoke and pot, cigarettes, alcohol, not finding out that I had polycystic ovarian syndrome and hypothyroidism until my early 30s, and not getting on medication to regulate my thyroid until I was nearly 31, I had reached my highest weight at the beginning of 2022 at the age of 32 of 287 pounds. So you might be wondering, what is my goal weight? My goal is to reach 135 pounds. Specific? Yes. Unreasonable? Unreachable? Absolutely not. Now, I don't want to get too hung up on ideal weights and BMIs. Yes, 135 would be my ideal weight based on my height. But you know what? I know I would feel and look great at 150, 160. 
Who am I kidding? I would be ecstatic to be 180 again, but that would be technically considered overweight by BMI standards. So my point is to take BMI standards with a grain of salt, but not too much because salt makes you retain water and it's not good for your heart and blood pressure. But anyways, I'm not trying to preach to you that you need to be at your ideal weight or a perfect BMI to be considered healthy. It's just not the case. So why 135? Well, that was my weight back in eighth grade and I was fully developed by then and I haven't gotten any taller than then, unfortunately. So why can't I be that weight again? Yes, it is true that the older you get, your metabolism slows down and it gets hard to lose weight, but it doesn't mean you can't. And despite having a sluggish thyroid that is being now regulated with medication, um, and having PCOS, which makes it hard to lose weight, it does not mean that with proper diet and exercise that I can't lose weight. It just means it might take a little longer and may require a little harder work at times. Side note, it may not be a bad idea to check with your doctor just to make sure that there are no underlying medical factors that may be hindering your attempts at weight loss. I wish I had found out I had hypothyroidism a long time ago. Now, I know I said I am documenting my journey from the beginning stage, which isn't completely true. I did manage to lose a little over 30 pounds last year. Now, 30 pounds isn't anything to scoff at, but visibly, I feel like I do not look much different than I did being 30 pounds heavier. I do feel better though, so there is that. But if I had truly committed to the process, I know I could have lost that in roughly three months instead of nine. I say nine because I really didn't actively start trying to lose the weight until probably April of last year. I believe I could have lost 30 pounds in a third of that time if I had actually been more consistent with sticking to my calorie goal and working out more consistently. I did start to count my calories last year but went over them a lot and had very few days where I ate less than 2,000 calories. The best thing I did do for myself last year that helped me lose weight was that I started walking and over the summer I swam multiple times a week. Now one point I want to make clear here is I am not trying to lose the weight super fast, just more consistently because I truly feel that losing weight more gradually will keep the weight off for good. Every time I've lost weight quickly, it was from fad dieting. So now that I have given you the Cliff Notes version of my weight gain and what my goals are here, I think I have jabbered on long enough and would like to get into week one by first showing you the tools that I use to get me closer to my goal. Step one that I cannot recommend enough is planning your meals in advance. This is the app that I use to put in my meals. It allows you to individually list your breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the week. I try to plan my meals out a few weeks in advance or even more. I highly recommend this for a number of reasons. Not only does it help when planning your grocery list for the coming weeks, but it also prevents impulse meals that will most likely be unhealthy and also costly. Here you can see kind of what the app looks like and how breakfast, lunch, and dinner are divided. You can plan out for weeks in advance. I've also included some pictures of what I ate that day so you can kind of see the proportions. This spread here was actually from the night before. Uh, we just had leftovers from our charcuterie board for New Year's Eve and then we did a full Thanksgiving Day spread for dinner that evening. Here is the app that I use to track my calories. I'm sure there are other similar apps, this just happens to be the one that I use and has always worked for me. And when I say always, I mean I remember using this same app over 10 years ago when me and my bestie counted calories one summer and each lost 20 pounds. Yes, I have been down this road of calorie counting prior to 2021, which is why I know it works. It might look like a lot of info when putting things in here, but one great thing about this app is that you can save meals as presets. So if you eat something frequently or have a variation of that meal in the future, and you don't wanna to have to input a ton of items in every time, it does make life easier. So it does look like a lot that has been put in here for one day, but as you get used to the app and using it every day, it does get easier to use and takes less time when inputting your calories. Another practice I cannot recommend enough when trying to lose weight is drinking lots and lots of water. And guess what? There's an app for that too. I feel like a lot of people are not drinking enough water and don't even realize it. It is a fact that sometimes when you feel hungry, really your body is just thirsty. Another part of my weight loss plan is tracking my steps. Did you know that it is recommended to walk roughly 10,000 steps a day? That's over four miles a day. 
Now I work from home and prior to this year have led a very sedentary lifestyle. I'd be lucky to get up to 3000 steps in a day. No joke. So part of my plan here is to try to get as close to 10,000 steps in a day. A Fitbit or something similar will set you back about 100 bucks. Am I saying that you need to invest in one to lose weight? Absolutely not, but I think it is a great device to have. Another cool app that I think is going to be useful for me in my journey is a daily journal app. I had to do a little research to find a good app that wasn't riddled with ads. This one here I found is pretty decent and the ads are really not bad. I wanted to start doing this because I have never been someone who has been into keeping a daily diary or anything like that, but I think it will help me in my journey by keeping me conscious about what I'm doing each day to get me closer to my goals. On days that I slip up, I can kind of keep myself accountable by logging it and to just keep myself conscious of all the different changes I'm making. And I also think it'll aid me being able to look back to see what changes I started implementing towards the beginning and maybe have forgotten to do in the present. You'll see on this day one, one of the things that I started doing was carpal tunnel exercises. I don't know if you're anything like me, but with growing up playing video games, using cell phones from an early age, and then going into clerical work, it's no wonder I've got carpal tunnel syndrome and it will probably require surgery in the future, unfortunately. These exercises were actually given to me by my doctor and I think they are helpful after just doing them every day for one week. So I decided to add them in here in case they could be helpful to anyone. This concludes day one and brings us to Monday, the funnest day of the week. Now, as you can see, one of the things I had for breakfast was kefir. If you've never heard of kefir, well, neither had I until I read about it in a book about probiotics. It's basically fermented milk. Now, I know that sounds gross, but if you like Greek yogurt, this drink has a similar flavor. The first flavor I tried was chocolate, which I would not recommend because I don't think sour chocolate is a flavor that ever works. Um, maybe a really dark chocolate, I guess you could say, is a bit sour, but I would recommend the blueberry or peach as they kind of just taste like uh, unripened blueberry or peach. It's a great source of probiotics, as is apple cider vinegar. You'll see here a recipe I found on Pinterest, which is basically apple cider vinegar, honey, lemon juice, and cinnamon. I would recommend the Bragg's brand as it includes the mother, which is the actual culture that contains the healthy bacteria. Not all apple cider vinegars are built the same. If you get a cheap, like great value brand, it's not going to contain the mother, which is really what you wanna be looking for. I honestly cannot sing enough praises when it comes to probiotics. They are so healthy for you and conducive to weight loss. I'm actually looking to do a whole video on probiotics alone because there's just so much information I can share on the subject, so definitely look out for that video in the future. This drink was not the tastiest thing I've ever had, but for your health. Here are the pictures from day two of what I ate, uh, again just to show you the portions. And what I made for lunch that day was black eyed peas with ham hocks and they were absolutely delicious. So I have decided to share that recipe here, which brings us to our recipe of the week. Now these, I kid you not, tasted a lot like Popeye's beans and rice. I don't know how I pulled that one off, but they were very similar. Um, I found an app where I can create recipes. So I have shared this here as well as the recipe. I found this particular recipe on Pinterest as well because of course I find everything on Pinterest and it was a slow cooker recipe but I had no time for that so I cooked this recipe at a boil for a few hours to speed up the cooking time. I didn't soak the peas overnight which a lot of times is recommended with dried beans but if you forgot to do that and don't have the time just boil the heck out of them. It was a great recipe and fed us throughout the week so I highly recommend. Also, side note, it is apparently good luck to eat black eyed peas on New Year's Day. So if you didn't know that, now you can plan for next year. I legit have had a hard time finding black eyed peas towards the end of the year for that reason. Also, you will notice that I had cornbread with the black eyed peas. And one thing I do that makes the best cornbread is I will just use a cheap box mix and substitute out like half of the oil and one of the eggs for a can of cream corn. It makes the best cornbread. And that gets us through day two. And I hope you're paying attention because there will be a quiz at the end. Moving into day three, you can see that more turkey was on the menu. I think by this point in this week, I was starting to get a little sick of turkey. 
I also did another apple cider vinegar drink because I enjoyed the first one so much. Not really. And then more leftovers in case you have not seen this picture enough. <laughs> but what is this? It's our bonus recipe of the week, turkey soup. Now, one of my favorite things to do when it comes to Thanksgiving is using the whole leftover carcass to make a turkey soup. Of course, after I've removed as much meat as possible. And since we did a Thanksgiving Day spread for New Year's, I decided to make this and share it with you all. It is actually amazing how much meat comes off this thing after boiling it. It is such a hearty, delicious soup and makes a huge batch. And it's also a great source of collagen too, because we all know how popular collagen is these days. Now it is a lot of work when it comes to separating all the bones and cartilage from the meat after you've let it cool down and have strained and set aside the liquid of course. Seriously though, you have to be really careful with going through it as there are a lot of little bones and such from like the spine. So I go through it like three times and still am a little cautious when eating it. So just FYI. Still worth it though. We have a huge container of it in our freezer and this is after eating the soup all week. So that is my bonus recipe for you this week. I think what I will end up doing is a separate video on collagen and bone broth alone because they also have great health benefits and I could go on and on about these. I would honestly rather get my collagen from like a bone broth rather than a powder. I have tried several brands and they just do not taste the greatest. Even after adding them to smoothies, I can still taste them, so if you have some suggestions or a specific brand that you like, by all means let me know because I have had a hard time finding a collagen powder that I actually really like. One last thing that you will see here for day 3 is I have notated in my journal that I started doing size. This is something I found like 6 years ago and it has literally been in my closet since I bought it. So I decided, you know what, it's finally time to try it out. There haven't been any lawsuits from what I can see since then, so, and their BBB rating is decent, so why not? It's supposed to slim your jawline and I guess can also help with jaw tightness and pain. Of course, I've seen disclaimers that say it really doesn't do anything. Um, there are always, of course, risks in it that it could maybe even cause irritation or slight TMJ. I'm just using the starter resistance piece and do not see myself investing or working my way up to a higher resistance. So I'm just going to try it. Maybe it'll help with the double chin. We'll see. We'll, we'll find out. I'm only doing it a few times a week, so we'll see how it goes. But since I mentioned it in my journal, I figured I would share it here. Another thing that I would like to point out here is that you will see at the bottom of your calorie app after you've entered in all your calories for the day, it breaks down your macros such as sodium, sugars, cholesterol. Of course, it is always good to cut down on these things if you are trying to lose weight. If you have high blood pressure, cutting down on your sodium is obviously really important. I actually had high cholesterol at one point last year and was able to bring it down to normal levels without medication just by tracking my cholesterol intake and by working out. So that is something to consider, but at the end of the day, I really am more concerned with just tracking the number of calories. Here you will see another recipe I came across that was probably advertised on Facebook or Instagram, and it is dandelion tea with curry leaves. Now I didn't even bother trying to find fresh curry leaves, so I just found dried curry leaves on Amazon, of course, because I buy everything on Amazon. I also found the dandelion tea on Amazon as well. You just boil these along with some fresh ginger and supposedly it's good for weight loss so I decided to try it and share it here. The tea was mildly spicy and not bad. I absolutely love tea and drink it all day every day so I might try this from time to time. There are certainly better teas I would rather be drinking but I have a whole box of dandelion tea now so I might as well drink it. And that brings us into Thursday and guess what's for breakfast? You guessed it, another turkey sandwich. Holy turkey, Batman. I don't think I have ever eaten this much turkey in my life, but I do love turkey, so I can't complain. One thing I think that will benefit me in my journey is that I am literally the least pickiest person I've ever known. I have never met a vegetable I didn't like, and I love salads. I also am very satisfied with a little amount of dressing and do not need to load up my salad with cheese and croutons just to enjoy it. So I guess my suggestion for you is if you are a pickier eater is to find ways to enjoy healthier things. If you need to put cheese and croutons on your salad to enjoy it, that's okay. Because you know what? There's calcium and protein in that cheese. 
So do what you need to do to incorporate healthy foods into your diet, as long as you're accounting for all your calories. That's my motto. Another thing you will see as we move along here is that I started to monitor my sleeping patterns. After gaining 70 pounds over the course of six years, I do have mild sleep apnea, and it is one thing that has definitely motivated me to lose weight. One thing that is great about the Fitbit is that it can track your sleep performance. Now, of course, it's not 100% accurate, but hey, it's something. And I really think it is doing something correctly here because I've noticed just from losing 30 pounds last year that my sleep performance does appear to have improved some and I'm definitely feeling it. I also feel more rested on days when it says I got better sleep, so there must be something it's doing right in tracking my sleep. If you've made it this far in the video, you are probably sick of my voice by this point. I know I am. So I am going to let the rest of the calorie portion play out for the remainder of the week and we will pick it back up afterward to go over the fitness portion of my week, which will not be nearly as lengthy, I promise. And then we will get to the big reveal of how much I lost this week. So stay tuned. And now for something completely different. It's the workout portion of the video. And we are almost through week one, so if you made it this far, thank you so much for sticking with me. Here is something I found on Pinterest, and it is a 21-day arm sculpting challenge. I am actually doing this along with a 21-day challenge for glutes and abs as well. So you'll see me doing some of those in this video also. Now, of course, I am not doing these exercises this quickly. It should definitely be a very controlled movement and you should not be rushing through these but for the sake of the video i did speed up this video 
another point I wanted to make when it comes to working out and weight loss is it really is a combination of strength training and cardio that is going to be beneficial. This is what's going to build lean muscle mass and support metabolic health. So it's not just about cardio, it is really about building lean tissue. Strength training can literally be done with using your own body weight to create resistance. As you will see with some of these exercises, there is no equipment involved. Now, of course, I do use dumbbells and a kettlebell for some of these exercises. If you don't have a kettlebell, use a cast iron skillet. I don't know what to tell you. Um, you can get dumbbells on Amazon for less than 20 bucks. I have eight pound dumbbells and the kettlebell I use is 10 pounds. You can find these at a Dick's Sporting Goods or even a Walmart or Target for pretty cheap. It's a small investment to make to do some of these exercises, but there are plenty of other exercises you can do that don't require equipment. Or you can literally do these same exercises minus the equipment and it will still suffice in the beginning stage. You'll also see me stretching in between some of these exercises as well. It is so very important to stretch, especially before working out. This will help prevent cold muscles and injuries, so I cannot recommend this enough. Another exercise I found on Pinterest is this 30 day wall squat challenge. Day one was only 10 seconds and it was a challenge. I do not see how five minutes is going to be possible by the end of the month, but I will say for after doing this for just a week, 10 seconds is nothing. So I know I'm already building my strength after just one week. The planks though, I will say I do not enjoy and have not gotten easier. Does anybody like these for real? Like they're awful. I mean, I do feel these in my abs big time, so I am excited to burn some belly fat from doing these at least. And the last exercise you will see here that I started this week is the infinity hoop. Cue the Benny Hill music, please. I saw this advertised online and bought it last year and probably tried it twice and couldn't even get it going for more than 10 seconds. After a week of doing these, I can do 30 seconds, so there's definitely some improvement there. I think I will try to add like 30 seconds each week as I build my strength up and get better with this thing. Stop making excuses. If you want something bad enough, you have to make the time for it. Your dreams aren't just going to come true on their own. You have to work for them. I saw a compilation video recently and Denzel Washington had said, dreams without goals are just dreams. And that really resonated with me. It's so very true. You have to have goals to meet in order to make those dreams a reality. And your dream isn't just going to come true on its own. It does take work. So stop making excuses to continue to overeat and eat unhealthy things in excess. Of course, with this channel, I'm trying to make it clear that you don't have to give up unhealthy foods. You just have to cut down on them and you have to move. You have to physically work out. It's all part of the process and you have to embrace the process. Um, trust me, I am not someone who likes working out, but I'm definitely acting like I do with how much I work out now because I know that's what's gonna get me closer to my goal. I cannot tell you how many times I have made the excuse to start fresh tomorrow or start fresh on Monday or the first of the month. I have been the queen of tomorrows my entire life. So you got to get out of that headspace and just go for it and stop making excuses. All right, you guys, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so very much for watching. Um, I know it's a lot of information and I don't expect my future videos to be as lengthy um, since I've gone over some of the basics here and, and what I'm doing. But um, yeah, uh, it's finally time to reveal just how much I lost in week one. And it is insane. I cannot believe how much I have lost, um, aside from bits of my sanity. Um, but no, in all seriousness, it was a really easy week. Um, I ate a ton of delicious food. I ate a ton of carbs between all those turkey sandwiches and leftover mashed potatoes and stuffing. So, um, you know, I felt satiated. I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything. And it's not like I did some crazy P90X workout routine. I just did some weight resistance exercises from the comfort of my own bedroom and got on the treadmill. And yeah, I lost 6.6 .6 pounds this week. It's insane. Do I expect to lose that much every week? Certainly not. 
Um, now some of this weight I'm sure is from the holidays. This is the first week of the year. So um, between Thanksgiving and New Year's, I'm sure I gained a little bit of weight, but I mean, that's just a crazy amount to lose in a single week. I don't think I've ever lost that much in a single week in my entire life. So yeah, I'd be happy to lose like two, three pounds a week. My monthly goal is about 10 pounds a month. So that is a great start and super motivational. And yeah, I'm just super excited about this number. One last thing I wanted to include here for posterity is some evidence of my weight loss from last year because I totally forgot to weigh myself on film at the beginning of this week. This is a screenshot from Healthy Wage. I signed up for this last February with a goal to lose 60 pounds by the end of the year and unfortunately only lost half of that, so I extended it to June of this year. You basically set a wager each month that you pay and essentially bet on yourself to lose a certain amount of weight in a certain amount of time. At the end, if you have met your goal, you will then win money. I did not bet my entire weight loss goal just because this does cost me 20 bucks a month until I reach my goal. So I figured I'd start with 60 pounds to begin with. Um, I also figured I'd just share this here in case you are interested in looking into it for yourself. From the research I've done, this does seem to be legit and I feel like it is just another layer of motivation to help me stick to my weight loss goals. And then of course here is the end of week weigh in video to show that I did in fact lose 6.6 .6 pounds. And that's a wrap for week one. I am very excited for the coming weeks and to continue to share my weight loss progress with you all here and just share my weight loss journey. Uh, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you liked about the video. I hope you found something helpful about it. Uh, let me know what I can improve on. If there's other information when it comes to weight loss, other subjects that you might want me to share. And by all means, if you have some advice and weight loss tips of your own, definitely share them here. Let's build a community and help each other get us closer to our weight loss goals. I have a lot of information when it comes to this subject, having been obsessed with weight loss virtually my whole adult life. I have a lot of other ideas that I wanna create videos for aside from these weekly updates. So definitely be on the lookout for those in the future as well. And thank you again so very much for watching this. And until next time, take care of yourself.